rolling again now. Um, all right, now, what about uh, this, um, has Tarn misled its customers in Japan over eco-flooring? Well, I believe so. I mean, <clears throat> the company's entitled when it's got independent third-party certification that clearly indicates long-term sustainability of its wood supply, it's clearly entitled to make the claims about sustainability. I mean, this independent certification is exactly what it says. Third parties reviewing wood supply and indicating the type of wood that's being used and its sustainability. In the long term, the though. Nature of the company, that's the nature of the company's claims and uh, that's backed by independent third-party certification. But that's talking about long-term supply. At the moment, that, that, that timber is not coming from plantations, uh, exclusively from plantations, so it's a... But no one suggests uh, in any certification scheme, whether it's Forest Stewardship Council or the PEFC, that the only sustainable supply of wood is plantations. That is simply not the position here in Tasmania. There are private landowners harvesting native forests that have certification from FSC. So both the certification systems envisage that there is harvesting from native forests where regeneration and replacement occurs, and that's exactly the log supply that Tarn receives from Forestry Tasmania, and it is sustainable. And it's independently verified as being sustainable and the company is entitled to uh, the chain of custody and the references to sustainability that it makes. So the, the um, so the the campaign by the Huon Valley Environment Centre clearly impacted on Tarn business. Absolutely, it has, and it's spread misinformation and lies about Tarn in the international markets. Uh, suggestions have been made that the international markets somehow have changed, but in fact what's happened is that companies have been threatened that if they continue to purchase wood, there will be a significant environmental campaign against them, even though there is independent certification that suggests the wood is available and sustainable. So, so how is it that you describe that as an eco product? Is it because of the long term plan for sustainability? Well, absolutely. And because the wood is every tree that's being harvested is being replanted and replaced. We're using a product that is both you know, biodegradable, it's recyclable, and it's produced sustainably. And if you think about it, if you want to put a product into the market that stores carbon, which is what the whole carbon debate, the environmental debate's about in this country, you use wood. It's the one product that stores carbon, and storing it as we do in a veneer that then goes into a flooring product is an eco product. I can't think of a better one. Right, so that's the definition of eco flooring that you're marketing in well, Japan. Well, eco, eco flooring has got a supply path around it in terms of the supply of the logs, where they come from, whether they're regenerated, where the codes of forest practice are properly adhered to. There's a whole range of different parameters involved in the definition. And our wood is independently certified and supplied from forests that are regenerated. But forests that also potentially have high conservation value because you, as, as, as we know they're all mixed they're mixed well, uh, it's forests. one opinion from Jenny Weber right uh, there's a process going on at the moment between environmental groups and the industry to determine what areas will be available long term to industry and what areas will go into new conservation reserves and Ta'an will fully support that process we've been supporting it to date if the wood supply changes 
we'll change our processes to match that. But it's not Ta Arn's business, we're a veneer company. It's not our business to determine what forests are high conservation value and what forests should be harvested. It's the independent processes that must determine and the forest practices system must regulate that independently of Ta'an. So you think it's uh, all the focus on Ta'an recently is unfair? Well, absolutely unfair because this is a company that is, uh, as I say, taking logs that would otherwise have been turned into wood chips and making a high value product that adds substantially to the economic and social benefit of Tasmania. And we'll simply take the wood from the areas that the Parliament of Tasmania, the elected Parliament, determines where areas are parks and where areas are forests. It's not for Ta'an to determine those things. So the What's the status of those contracts now in Japan? I mean, what, 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 what's the status? Uh, were they cancelled? Were they, they were really, yeah, uh, we have lost up to 50% of our um, markets in Japan as a direct result of the actions of Jenny Weber and Markets for Change, who have spread misinformation and lies about the company and who have threatened the market that if they continued to purchase from Tasmania, they would unleash a significant campaign against the companies using our products. So this effectively amounts to blackmailing international companies against the use of a product here in Tasmania that is sustainably produced, independently certified, and where the two houses of the parliament have voted and determined what areas are to be available. So it's rather anti-democratic. Will Tahan be taking any action against the Huon Valley Environment Centre? I don't think it's for Tahan to take action against the Huon Environment, environment Centre. I mean, it's pointing out to you that the But if you're, actions, if you're concerned that they are spreading lies and jeopardising massive contracts in Japan, then why wouldn't you want to take action against them? Well, everyone's entitled to their point of view. So we're not taking action to silence or prevent any group from expressing their point of view. We're simply making it very clear that all the independent evidence shows our wood comes from certified forests, independently certified forests. The wood that we're processing today used to go as wood chips. And we're making sure the community understands that we have got a sustainable supply and we are adding real value to these logs in Tasmania. You say that everyone's entitled to a point of view, but you've also said that they're spreading lies. So, what, are they entitled to spread lies? Well, you'd hope that common sense would prevail, but there is no point in trying to prevent people expressing their point of view. And when they'll always express a point of view, I'm pointing out to you that what they've suggested, that somehow markets have changed in Japan, is not a matter of fact. The companies that were purchasing this product have been told if they continue to purchase the product, there'll be a blackmail against them. Now that is hardly the best way to run and to supply information and to operate in markets. Currently there's a process working through the issues of high conservation and other areas. We'll accept the result of that process. Um, can you tell me which uh, companies have cancelled the contracts in Japan? Is it Panasonic? Is it Edo? No, I don't think it's important for me to divulge direct company information. It just provides more opportunity for more people who want to be mischievous in the market. We've got a range of different customers. What's happened as a direct result of the actions of markets for change has been a reduction in orders. And we've had to sack 50 people, 50 people who work in these mills on sustainable wood supply have lost their jobs as a direct result of this misinformation that's been spread about our company in those markets. And that's the information that people need to understand. When you look behind me and see these small diameter logs that are the head logs from sawmilling operations that are being turned to a high value product, I don't think many Tasmanians would support that sort of action damaging the brand of Tasmania and taking away the livelihood of Tasmanian families. 
OK, well, I've worked through all my questions, but there's just a couple of things that came up in the car on the drive down here that I'd like to get a quick comment on. The, the Grand Perfect, you, he, he reminded me of the, uh, the Grand Perfect um, uh, plantation up in uh, Malaysia. And uh, uh, just trying to think what they, yeah, the you know, Claire makes a pretty strong, Claire Rucastle Brown, the Sarawak report, makes a strong uh, claim that uh, Hamid Sapawi was, was the owner, which I understand that uh, un, um, sorry, disputed. Well, you're clearly not sure what yeah. the question is, and I'm not sure yeah. what you're talking oh, okay. about, so I don't think that's going to be very yeah, yeah. helpful or productive line of question. Yeah, no, it's basically uh, a, a dispute sure. about the ownership and whether whether Hamid Sapawi was the owner of, ta of uh, Grand Perfect at a well, time. He I said he was. If that's a question that you want to ask, that you ask that question directly, right? Yeah. I'm not personally involved or have mm -hmm. any particular knowledge of yep. what you're talking about. That's fine. Okay. Now, is there anything else you'd like to say before uh, before you? Well, there's lots of things I'd like to say. I mean, the most important thing to say and make sure that it, when this is all cut back into 20 second uh, grabs, that uh, what you see behind me is the log supply for this company. And we've been working really hard to try and turn these small diameter logs into a high quality product. We're cooperating fully with the whole process of peace talks and we'll work with whatever the new good supply might be in the same sort of innovative way the companies can work from day one. And we're really delighted to have the support that we have in the Tasmanian community in that project. Can you just stay just where you are? Just need to get a shot over my shoulder before you rush. Yeah.